to the Word of God. Turn with me to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Verse 11 through 18. Don't worry, we're going to do offering. I know y'all eager to give. <laughs> First John chapter 3, verses 11 through 18. While we're doing that, I just want to say thank you for everyone who came out to the National Night Out yes, sir. in August. I want to thank y'all for showing South River we are here. Sometimes we've been here, but sometimes people need to be reminded. Amen. So I want to thank you all for that. And even for the yard sale that took place yesterday, I pray that, uh, that uh, y'all made some funds. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. First John chapter 3, verses 11 through 18. This is a really simple message, but it has some, uh, some serious consequences if we don't abide by it. So let's pray, and then we'll get right into it. Amen. Amen. Father, I need you. I need you, God, as I get ready to preach your word. Give me clarity of thought, concision of speech, and conviction of heart to preach your word so that your people will leave here with a heart like yours. Lord, would you, would you move in this place? Have your way, oh God. Have Christians sitting down and you stand up. Father, I pray, use my mouth for your glory to say what you would have me to say so that your people will leave here stronger than they came in. And I pray, Lord, any distractions, anything that will hinder them from hearing your word, I pray now in the name of Jesus that you will remove the distractions and open their hearts. And Father, I pray that it would be exactly what it is uh, you, you want them to hear or what they've been praying for. Let your word be prophetic in this moment to speak to somebody, God, even now. Lord, bless these few moments. God, preaching belongs to you, and we know that you will get all the glory, honor, and praise. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. 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 1 John chapter 3, verse 11 through 18. If you have it, say amen. amen. Actually, if you don't mind, let's go back a verse. Let's go to verse 10, because they're, they're, they're connected there. Verse 10. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Watch this. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. For, his, for this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil. And his brother's righteous. Do not be surprised, brother, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. I want to preach from these words, a mark of true Christianity. A mark of true Christianity. And I need your prayers. I'm going to go back a little bit. Uh, uh, this is... Uh, Hopefully it'll be a little nostalgic for you. When I was in high school, <laughs> actually it's quite funny how I see the trends in the clothing that the people are wearing. Uh, Big Will, Brother Bird, Brother Chris, the kids that are wearing things today. It's kind of quite astonishing to me uh, because um, you see the kids in Champion. You see the kids in... Uh, I'm going to, it's going to be funny. You see the kids in Starter. You see the kids wearing things. But when I was growing up, if they caught you in Champion, you got made fun of. Because you wore Champion, but the reason why you wore Champion is because your mother and father couldn't afford Nike. I wish I, now, mind you, for the record, it's not so much that your parents were broke, but they said, I'm not going to pay $50 for shirts for you to wear on Monday and you be naked the rest of the week. Right. So you're going to get here this champion from Caldors. Y'all remember Caldors? Y'all going to walk with me? 
Y'all gonna get these champion shorts from Caldors. I'm gonna get you five for 30 versus your $50 Nike pant. Y'all not talking to me. You would get made fun of for putting on champion. Y'all didn't get champion. But if you came in on gym day and had on feelers, yes, sir. and somebody else had on Nike, you say, what are you doing with those? Before it, before they said, what are those? We were used to get smoked for wearing feelers on gym day. But, 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 but if there is anything that you got roasted for growing up, yeah, I'm, I'm just giving you my trauma. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But anything that you got roasted for growing up is if you had on fake jewels. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is nothing more heretical <laughs> than fake Jordans. Now, mind you, sometimes the way this works is because y'all know Jordans are very expensive. It's very expensive. And so what they would do sometimes, help me on the spirit, is that sometimes people would, you know, they come to the barbershop and be like, I got those Jordans. And you can't find them nowhere else, and they're very expensive. So when you see somebody with a Jordan, a Jordan S, it looks like a Jordan, and it's in your price range, you would buy it. And so you get all hyped coming to school, and your friends look at your Jordans and say, nah, bro, that ain't it. It's like, these are the Jordans. No, 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 no. And the way you were able to tell if they were Jordans or not because of the Jordan logo. One hand up. Two arms separate, two legs separated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you saw two hands up and two knees up, <laughs> nah, no, you got the shacks. <laughs> Those are not the Jordans. Or when you saw a hand, when you saw a hand like this, it's like, those are not the Jordans. That logo is fake. And the only way you could tell the real from the fake was the the, the logo. It's the same with Christianity. How do you tell the real Christian from the fake one? Can I tell you? It's very simple. My sermon is not deep. Love. Thanks for having me. God bless your church. Heaven smile upon you. Love. See, John, John, as he's been doing since chapter one, has been differentiating the saints from the ain'ts, the reals from the fakes. The, the, the uh, real Christians from the fake Christians because uh, he's talking to a church in Asia Minor. Help me, Holy Spirit. And in Asia Minor, there have been false prophets who've been claiming that they know Jesus and have been literally taking people away from the church. And John says, let me write a letter to y'all and let y'all know who the real saints are and who are the fake ones. And he said, I'm going to affirm the real saints and I'm going to rebuke the fake ones. And so what has been happening is the fake saints have been saying, I know God, but I'm still in my sin. I know God, but I'm not in the church. I know the Lord, but I'm not preaching the gospel. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And so, and so what was happening is John says, well, I need to continue to affirm the real believers, and by affirming the real believers, I'm telling you what Christianity or what it really, really means to be a Christian. And so John just simply adds to the list. He says a, a Christian is someone who believes in the gospel of Jesus Christ. They believe in the word of God. They believe they have sinned, but Jesus forgave them of that sin. But there's another mark of Christianity. And the mark of Christianity is this. Love one another. Remember in John chapter 2, uh, uh, John chapter 2, John said that they went out from us. Even though they were with us. The people said, we don't want nothing to do with the brethren. And John says, I'm sorry, if you are leaving your brothers and sisters in Christ, you can't be part of the body of Christ. You, uh, if I can just really make it simple, you can't be a Christian and not have love for your brother and sister in Christ. It's not hard. It's very simple. If I, if I could put my sermon in a sentence, it's really this. A Christian without love is not a Christian. It's simple. It's not hard. It's not hard. If I can go deeper, I, I sound like my pop up now. I, I wonder if you have the Holy Spirit. Because the fruit of the Spirit is love. Watch me. Watch me. See, you can speak tongues all you want. Praise God. We need that. You can prophesy all you want. Praise God. We need that. But if you have not love, Paul says that you just make a noise. We love is the main ingredient. Love is what keeps us together. And if you are claiming you know Jesus as your Savior, but if you look around and you hate somebody in here and you are comfortable in that hate, we have a problem. 
Because a Christian without love is not a Christian. But it's, this isn't anything, watch me, this isn't new. Paul says in, uh, excuse me, John says in verse 11, he says that you have heard this message before. Love one another. It's throughout the Bible, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. John chapter 13, verse 34, I give you a new command. Love one another just as I have loved you. You must love one another. This is my command. Love one another. John 15, 12. John 15, 17. Love one another. Romans, Romans chapter 12, verses, verse 10. Show family affection to one another with brotherly love. Romans 13, 8. Do not owe anything except to love one another. Galatians 5, 13, for you were called to be free, brothers. Only don't use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but serve one another through love. Let me just put it in your head so you get it. If you don't hear anything else in this sermon, here it is. Love one another. Love one another. Love one another. This is a go and do likewise. I can really end it here and close it up, but there's more in here. But in order for us to truly be Christians, we ought to be loving everybody in here. We are called to love. Am I making sense? Yes. But now we have to ask the question, what is love? Why should we love? And how should we love? And John is going to show us that throughout this passage, but what is interesting about this text is, is if you actually look at the next portion of Scripture, verse 12, I, he does something odd. He brings up the story of Cain and Abel. We should, we, it's, it's very, very odd. He, in, in talking about love, he said, John says, before we get into what love is, John says, let me show you what love is not. Mm. Verse 12, are you with me? Yeah. We should not be like Cain, who was of evil, of the evil one, and murdered, and murdered his brother. Why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brother's righteous. One of these days, I'm just going to have to preach straight through Genesis all the way to the story of Joseph. I just need to do it. Lord, give me grace. But for right now, for those of you that don't know the story of Cain and Abel, let me tell you about the first sons of humanity. Mm. The first people to be born of another human. That's a lot of preaching, all right. So. <laughs> but, but Cain and Abel were the first children of the world. Cain and Abel. And Cain and Abel just to give you a rough summary were to bring their sacrifices to God. Cain was, uh, Cain was a farmer and Abel was a shepherd. And, and just like a regular day, as they should have done, Cain brought an offering. He brought the first, he brought the uh, the fruits of the first, the fruits of his labor, and and Cain uh, uh, and Abel brought uh, uh, the first fruits of his labor. If you will, he brought a, a lamb, a firstborn. To, to God. And, and God said, Abel, I accept, but Cain, I reject. Now, what's interesting is, this is something. I, I really looked this up, and I, and I always thought the reason why Cain did not bring, or God rejected Cain's offering was because he didn't bring the first fruits. But that's not what the text says. And even when you look throughout other scriptures, you come to find that there was nothing wrong with Cain's offering physically. But what God had a problem with was his heart. Abel came in and he said, I'm going to give the first fruits. But, but the reason why Cain was rejected is because, in truth, Cain didn't care. It, it was unimportant. Hey, no. it, was, it wasn't true. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, genuine. When Cain brought his offering, he just said, oh, here we go. All right, here we go. Take it. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. It wasn't anything important. It wasn't anything uh, that he took seriously. Abel said, I want to honor God, which is why I'm going to set apart this just for Jesus, uh, except just for God. Cain said, eh, here you go. All right. And God said, and God said, why are you angry? He said, you do well if you just did what you're supposed to do. And, and, what, and, what, and what God was saying to him was, you know that you need to take your worship seriously. And you didn't do that. Can I park right here real quick? I'm moving on. But I just want to tell you, please don't ever let your worship become a chore. That's just a side note. Don't let your worship come become a chore. <clears throat> let me be clear. I'm not talking about singing on Sunday morning. I'm not talking about uh, the worship and praise we sing now. I'm talking about your life. Yes. Don't ever wake up in the morning and your word of God just become a checklist for you to say that I did it this morning. Yes. 
Because you, because you may find that maybe God is not accepting your worship. Mm. There was a song I, that we used to sing growing up. What if God is not happy with our praise? God's, and, and Cain shows us here that, 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 that your worship ought to be for real. That's just a side note. But, but why bring up Cain and Abel? Here's why we bring up Cain and Abel. The story of Cain and Abel is meant to be, watch me now, I'm moving. Are y'all still with me? Yes, sir. The story of Cain and Abel is meant to be an example of the Christian's relationship with the world and what should not be the Christian's relationship with one another. Mm -hmm. One more time. Cain and Abel is meant to be an example of the Christian's relationship with the world and what the and what the what should not be the Christian's relationship with one another. Uh -huh. Look at verse 12 and 13. We already read, but I'm going to read it again. We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not be surprised, brothers, that the world hates you. Watch this. The text said, Cain killed his brother, watch me now, because his deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. Watch me. He, Cain said, I'm literally jealous of Abel because he took his worship seriously and I did not. Wow. Yes, 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 yes. In other words, Abel took his relationship with God seriously and Cain did not. And Cain hated Abel because Abel took his worship seriously. Watch this. And John says, don't be surprised when the world does the same to you. Why? Well, in this situation, you would be Abel. You took your relationship with God seriously, but the world hates you because you took your relationship with God seriously. I, 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 I must, I must be honest. I, 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 I never thought, or rather, be honest with you, I, I always kind of, kind of said, eh, when people said I got haters. Anytime somebody said I got haters, I said, no, you don't. Ain't nobody thinking about you. Cut it out. Stop it. You don't have haters. But, but this text changed my theology, Pastor Terrell, because as Christians, you will have haters. Yes, sir. That's the truth. Sorry, I, my, my, my theology has changed. You will have haters. Yes, sir. You, you, you will. Why? Because this text tells us that you will have people that will hate on you just because you live in right. Yes, sir. I like how the, uh, the scholar Karen Job says this. She says, those who do not do what is right hate those who do. Yes, sir. Yes, the, the world will hate you because you live it right. Yes. It ain't got no, watch me. Sometimes they ain't jealous of your money. They can make that money just as quick. They're not jealous of your head. They can get that. They can buy that wherever they want to buy it. They ain't jealous of your suit. They can get whatever you got. But it's the fact that you're doing what they know they should be doing. Yes, sir. Help me, Holy Spirit. It's the fact that you're living right and they see them. And they're reminded they're, they're hurt because I should be doing that, but I'm not doing it. There is uh, there's some ne negative discourse right now in the NFL uh, between the coach of the Broncos and the coach of the Jets. Uh, uh, coach uh, Coach Sean Payton was talking about uh, Nathaniel Hackett. He said Nathaniel Hackett had the worst coaching tenure with the Broncos. We're not getting into who's football, but I know football season coming. Everybody relax. Stay focused. <laughs> but, 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 they said that Daniel Hackett had the worst coaching tenure when he was with the Broncos. He said it was that bad. Aaron Rodgers, obviously the new quarterback, is saying I was uncalled for. Keep my coach's name out your mouth. But the head coach of the Jets, he said, he said, uh, when somebody asked him, how do you feel about Sean Payton's comments? He said, the coach said, if you don't have any haters, then you ain't popping. <laughs> He said, so hang away. What am I saying to you? Let them people hate you. Yes, sir. And treat it as evidence that you're honoring the Lord. Yes, sir. Let the people go on and hate. That's all right. Go ahead. But that's just evidence to me that I'm doing what God told me to do. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, let, let it be evidence that I am saved. Hey. Let it be evidence that I'm sanctified. Let it be evidence. You can hate me all you want. Yes, I do treat people with respect. Why? Because I'm saved. Yes, I do. Love my neighbor as myself. Yes, I do. Love the Lord with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Come here. Let me talk to the children. You make sure you continue to honor the Lord. I know schools are about to get started, but you honor the Lord. Yes, I do listen to my parents. Yes, I do respect my teacher. I know you don't want to do it, but I'm honoring the Lord. And so if I got to be the one that's hated, 
knowing that you should be doing what I'm doing, then so be it. Yes, sir. And my response will be, follow me as I follow Christ. Because people will hate you when you are honoring the Lord. The world will hate you because you are living right as a Christian. That's the relationship the world will have with the Christian. However, that shouldn't be our relationship with one another. Look at verse 14. Verse 14 says, we know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. He says, he says, we know we pass from death to life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. What does John mean by death? He's talking about our spiritual condition. He says, if you are, if you, the, the way we know that we are no longer dead in our sins and we are alive in Christ, here it is. It's the fact that we love one another. Yes. It's not hard. The evidence that we have Jesus in our lives is the fact that we love. Now, 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 if I could say it this way, life is, is life is found in love. The eternal life you have in Jesus is found in the fact that you're able to love one another. Now, let me be clear. John isn't talking about love for the people in the world. Yes, we should have love for people in the world. We're supposed to do that. But, but what John specifically is talking about is our love for us in this city. It's the body of, of, of Christ. We, we do not have eternal life because we love people. No, we love the people of God because the Holy Spirit lives in us. You've heard me say this before. My relationship with God affects my relationship with people. Yes. And if I've truly been affected by the love of God in my life between me and God, then you will see it in the way that I treat my brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm -hmm. But I understand. I, I'm going to get in trouble now. Here we go. I, I understand. I get it. I do. I get it, Pastor Rowe, because, because it's loving is not the hard part. It's, it's who we're loving. Yeah. Uh, yep, here we go. Yep. This is a, I knew this was going to be quiet. Be, because, all right, I'm, I'm going to say it. People, man. <laughs> people. People can be hard to deal with. Yes, sir. You can say quiet all you want. I know I'm right about it. Yes, sir. It's okay. Trust me on this. I'm a pastor. I know this thing. I've lived it, no, I'm just playing. But, 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 you, 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 people, people say, it's just, little people show, say they're going to show up at 515, and they show up at 545, and I'm supposed to just wait. People, you know, people do people things. You, you, you said you were going to do this, and you did something else. Something came up. Well, something always comes up. Every time I need to, not you, y'all going to be quiet, but I'm going to keep on, I'm going to keep on, so it's, it's, People, but John, watch me. John is not saying that you won't have disagreements with people. Yes. That's not what John is saying. John is not saying that you won't get mad at somebody. John said you won't get mad. Yes. Why? Because we're people. That's right. You're gonna be upset with people. You're you're gonna be mad. You may even be tempted to hate people. You hate somebody right now. But John says the to show what shows that you have the love of God in your heart is that you don't stay there. Yeah. It's the fact that you say, I know you got problems. I know you crazy. I know you get on my nerves, but I love you anyway. Uh-oh. That's, that's what it means to say I'm loving my brother or sister in Christ. It's not that everything will be perfect, but through the bumps and bruises, I'm going to love through you through this. Yes, sir. And though we may disagree now, somewhere down the line, we will reconcile. Why? Because the love of is actually in my life. Amen. 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 I knew I, I knew I wasn't gonna get nothing behind it. That's okay. Because love is the evidence of life. Yes. If I have eternal life in my life, if I if I really have been saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'm gonna love you. That's right. I'm gonna tell you about yourself, and you're gonna tell me about myself. But I'm gonna love you afterwards. Yes, sir. It may be a little rocky at first, but we're going to keep on going. Why? Because the love of God is in my life. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. Watch this. Now, 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 if love is the evidence of life, here's the hard part. Nobody wants to hear it. Here's the hard part. If love is the evidence of life, hate is the evidence of death. Hmm. If love is the evidence of life, hate is the evidence 
of debt. Look at verse 15. Everyone who hates his brother, I'm sorry, let's go to 14, the, uh, the B portion, the second sentence. Whoever does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. It, it, it's, it's really not hard. And I hope you see the reoccurring message. Whoever does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and no murderer has eternal life dwelling in him. John says, if you do not love, you must be abiding in death, meaning you have not been passed from death to life. Yes. What is he saying? You, you're still dead in your sins. Yes. Amen? Amen? Very simple. You're, you're still in death. But everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. We've heard this before in the words of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, if you hate your brother, you may not be committing the murder, but you have the intent just like a murderer. John says, if you, uh, Jesus said, if you hate your brother, you're a murderer in God's sight. But then on top of that, he says, he says, if you, uh, he says, if, uh, if you are a murderer, he says, uh, eternal life is not abiding in you. Not only that, he's essentially saying that when you go, when Jesus comes back, you will be in eternal death. Yes. Are you seeing the, 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 the reoccurring thing? Death, death, death. Whoever does not abide in love is in death. If you hate your brother, you are committing homicide in your heart. That's death. If you have harbored hate in your heart without any conviction of the Holy Spirit, there is no way you can know Jesus, which is why the text says eternal life does not dwell in you. I don't have to get any deeper because I think I've already drove home my point. But if you hate somebody, it's only going to bring about death. Yes. If you hate someone, it's only going to bring about death. When I was growing up, they tried to scold me uh, when I was in, when, I guess this is the day we talk about uh, pastor's childhood. <laughs> But when I was growing up as a kid, they used to say, uh, I used to say, I hate homework. For the judge, I was not a good, I was done with, I was not a good uh, an example for, for school. Because I used to say, I hate doing homework. And my, my teacher would say, hate is a strong word. And I would say, I know it is, that's why I'm saying it. I hate doing, <laughs> but watch this. Say you hate something, that's one thing. But say you hate someone, yes. that brings about death. When you hate Someone. I, I'm sorry to bring this up, and I don't mean no harm, but that's why I firmly believe that only the gospel of Jesus Christ can, can, can cure the hate between people. Be because the only way you a person can stop harboring hate in his heart is if he has received the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the only way. The only way a man can receive eternal life is through the gospel of Jesus, of Jesus Christ. Hate will continue to bring about death, but the gospel of Jesus Christ will put love in a man's heart and give him life. That's how you stop racism. That's how you start classism. That's how you stop stereotypes. That's how people are treated correctly. Why? Because if I, because well, by myself, I'm only going to give about death. But when God comes into my life, yes, I know sir. I'm preaching right. It's going to bring about life, which yes. is how I'm able to love my neighbor as myself. Yes, That's the only way you cure this. Yes, we need some laws we need to fix. Absolutely, we need to do that. But it's up to the church to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. Why? Because that's the only way one man will stop hating another one. Yes. Love. And that love can only come from Jesus. Yes, sir. Do your marches? Praise God, I'm with you. I might be there. Do you change some laws? Absolutely, we need to do that. But if we stop preaching the gospel, then it's going to reoccur somewhere else. Yes. We need the gospel, which is why the church must go, therefore, make disciples of all nations. Yes. Because there's a gospel to preach. Yes, we need to preach the gospel because that's our duty. But if you really want to stop the hate happening in the world, preach the gospel. Yes, sir. I know I'm preaching right, but that's all right. I know we got to save souls, but if you really want to make a difference in the world, preach the gospel. Yes, sir. You want to put a little love in somebody's heart, preach the gospel. Yes. You want to stop racism, preach the gospel. Yes, Classism, preach the gospel. Because the only way I can look at you and see me as your equal is if I understand that the gospel puts us all on a level playing field. Yes, and the only way that can happen is if we preach. Love is the evidence of life. Yes, sir. Hate is the evidence of death. If we are to love one another, because it is the evidence that we have been changed by the gospel, we ought to love one another, excuse me. Because it is the evidence of the gospel. So the question now is, how do we love? Well, John says, let's back up. Because I'm, I'm, first of all, I want to tell you, what is love? 
how we love and why we love. And then I'm in my seat. Those three points, and then I'm out your way. How, uh, how we love, uh, excuse me, what is love, how to love, and why we love. Look at verse 16. I'm almost done. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us. And we are to lay down our lives for one another. By this we know love. That he laid down his life for us. What is love? Don't sing the song. <laughs> what, what is love? We know what love is because love was shown to us on the cross. Yes. Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's love. Greater love has no one than this. That someone laid down his life for his friends. That's, that's, that's love. Now what kind of love was that? Can I give you my definition? The love that was shown on the cross, watch this, was a decision to be self-sacrificial for the benefit of someone else. That's love. Let me say it again because this isn't going to be easy to swallow. Holy Spirit, help us to receive your word. The cross was a decision to be self-sacrificial, give me grace, Lord, for the benefit of someone else. John says that's love. That's what Jesus did for us on the cross. And John says, that's the love we ought to have for one another. Mm. Let me read it again, because I don't want you to miss this. It's a decision to be self-sacrificial for the benefit of someone else. And that love that Jesus showed to us is the same love we need to be showing to one another. Yes. Are y'all with me? Yes. I'm almost done. Watch me. It's a, number one, I want you to understand that love is a choice. I want you to understand, and, and maybe this will help somebody, love is more than a feeling. Mm. Yes, yes. How many know that you don't always love, uh, you don't, your emotions don't always back up uh, um, how you're supposed to feel? Yes. Let me give you a perfect example. You ever eat too much? I ain't going to talk about you, I'm talking about me. I've definitely eaten too much way too many times. And you ever eat so much that the very burger that you loved five minutes ago, you don't want to see it? You don't want to see nothing about it because it makes your stomach hurt. The very thing that you love is the thing that you don't love no more. Right, right. In that moment. Why? But 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 love is more than just your emotions because you, we all know that our emotions can be up and down, left and right, however way we, it wants to go. But love is a choice. Yes. Jesus made a choice. Love is a decision. But not only is love a decision, love is self-sacrificial. It's going to cost you something, whether it be money, time, or anything else. It will cost you something. It's force. It's going to cost you. What did it cost Jesus? His life. But not only that, but but love is for someone else's benefit. Love isn't selfish. You are not thinking of yourself. You're thinking about how your brother, your brother and sister in Christ, because that's what Jesus did. Jesus made a choice. It didn't feel good to go to the cross. I guarantee you, he did not wake up and say, I cannot wait for them to put the nails in my hands. No, it was something he did not like. It was something that was hard, which is why he said, Father, take this cup from me. But nevertheless, your will be done, because at the end of the day, love is a choice. Yes. Love will, will make you self-sacrifice. Love thinks about the other person. And that love that Jesus showed us yes. is the love that we are to show one another. That's what love is. Mm -hmm. You're not thinking about you. You're thinking about your brother and sister in Christ. Yes. You're giving something. And we're going to get to that now. So we understand what is love, but how do we love? Three, three ways. Open eyes, open hearts, and open hands. Look at verse 17. Are y'all still with me? Yeah, I'm closing up. I'm closing up. Verse 17. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? John very says plainly, and we are already going to get into it. We already said it. It's impossible to say that you are a believer and see your brother in need and just pass over him. It's just that that's in other words, that that's that's wrong. You just you're, you're not a believer if you say, and, and what he's essentially saying is, you see your brother in need, you have the resources to give him what he needs, but you pass him over anyway. He says, no, there's no way that you can, that, there's no way that you can receive the, uh, the, uh, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ and look at your neighbor and not physically help them in their time of need. Does that make sense? Right. And so, and so obviously this text is saying that we are not supposed to pass over our brothers and sisters, but we are supposed to do, we're supposed to do the opposite, which means help them. Amen? Amen. 
So, so how do we practice? How do we practically do that? Again, open eyes, open hearts, and open hands. And, and, and John, like I already said, John says, what needs do we have? What needs do your brothers have? It's not hard. You meet those needs. Amen. What, 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 but, but watch me. Here it is. But you can't meet the need of your brother if you don't see them. Mm. Let me say it again. John says, if you truly believe in Jesus Christ, your Savior, and you see your brother or sister in need, you are going to meet that need. But you can't see the need unless you first open your eyes. You, you, you have to open your eyes. Listen, don't turn a blind eye to your brother or sister in Christ, nor should we just assume, ready, everybody is all right. Yes. But we need to open our eyes and see if there is a need. Listen, I am not saying go around and ask everybody if they met their bills this week and just throw out cash. I mean, you got to like that, praise the Lord. But what I'm simply saying is be aware. Yes. This is practical. It's not going to make you shout, but it's going to make you think. Be, be, be aware of what's going, of going on. Watch me. Don't ignore the need of your brothers and sisters in this place. Yes. Because the truth of the matter is, y'all not going to like it, but I'm going to say it. I love you. I really do. I love you. But sometimes we like to, we like to come in, come out, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. I mean, can I, can I dwell here a little bit? Just a little bit. This ain't in my notes, but the Holy Spirit help me. We're a community. We're a family of believers. Yes, we come in to have the word. Yes, we come in to, to hear the word of God. We come here to get encouraged so that we can help, so to help us get uh, by throughout the day, Monday through Friday. I'm going to preach this and you're not going to like it. You're going to stay quiet. That's fine. But the truth of the matter is we are here for one another. Yes, sir. If there is a need in the house, somebody in here should be able to meet it. Yes, sir. And if we can't meet it individually, we should be able to meet it collectively. Yes. Because I must be honest with you, I, I, I love union, and I really, and I tell you why, one, one, one reason I really love union, because union is not a church that's just going to say we love you, but we will show it. Yes. And that's what John is saying. We are not just going to sit here and, and talk about it, uh, people get delivered and people get set free from the word, but there are also some ways that people can get set free with finances. Yes, sir. By helping them. Y'all yeah. not? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, sometimes the greatest blessing is, is gas money. Yes, sir. Y'all not, y'all. Sometimes the greatest blessing is changing your brother or sister's tire. Yes, sir. Come on in here. I know I'm preaching right. Help me, Holy Spirit, because I feel my help. It's not sometimes. I'm getting ahead of my text, but I'm going to go ahead with it. So, sometimes it's not enough to just to just send a text. It's sometimes you got to call. Yes, sir. It ain't sometimes. It ain't enough to call. Sometimes you got to show up. Yes, sir. Sometimes it, you, we got to take the word of Because you can say how much you love me, but it's not until you do it. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. All right. I gotta go. I, yes, I gotta go. Which brings me to my next point. You have to have open eyes. You have to have an open heart. You have to have open hands. Why, Pastor? Because love is an action. Yes, sir. I'm done. Love is an action. Love is an action. Verse 17. If anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? I'm sorry, verse 18. Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. In deed and in truth. What does that mean? I already said it. You can tell me you love me all you want, but if you don't do anything, I'm going to start questioning that. Mm. If your mother and father were raising you and they kept telling you, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you, but you ain't got no clothes on your back, but they got clothes on theirs and they're able to eat and all that and you are not eating, you are going to question the love that they are saying they're giving to you. It's got to be an action. You can tell people you love them, but sometimes a hug makes a difference. Yes, sir. I know this ain't deep. I know this ain't really deep and spiritual. But, but the, as I said before, how would we know that God loved us unless he sent his son? Yes. Yes. So, so you, you, we got to put in action to this. Yes. So I challenge you today. I'm done. I'm done. But I challenge you today. Your love needs to be more than a text message sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Your your love sometimes need to be more than a phone call. Sometimes, sometimes you need to. Can I? Can I? Get, I'm gonna get in trouble. Send somebody a twenty every now and again. Yeah. Pastor, you were good until you said money. 
And what do I mean by that? I don't mean just send them money because, no, no, money does not, I'm not, I'm not saying money is the way you show your love. What I'm saying is whatever, whatever, the, whatever the Holy Spirit uh, encourages you to do through the compassion in your open heart, follow that. Yes, sir. Follow that. As your pastor, I can't get everywhere. I, I wish I could, but if somebody's in the hospital, it's one way, it's one thing to call, but it's one, it's another thing when you show up. Yes, sir. I'm looking for so and so. Why? Because I love them. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry. That that's 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 what it is. Why? Why? Well, come on. Now, now I'm, I'm finished. I'm closing the book. But why do we show up at funerals? Because we love. Yes, sir. Nothing, nothing gets me. Uh, nothing makes me more happy is when there's a funeral in the body of Christ and the church shows up. Yes, sir. Nothing is sweeter when somebody is in need and the church comes together and says, "What do we got to do?" Yes, why? Sir. Because that's what love is. Hear me. We can pray all day and all night, but somebody got to do something. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done because I, I know y'all through. Because because the truth of the matter is we, we, we can get so spiritual, but we don't take the spirituality and mix it with our humanity. Yes, sir. We don't, we don't, in the, in the word of God, now I'm, I'm in trouble now. The word of God is not meant to just give us uh, give us insight on what's happening in here, but it shows us how to treat another, one another down here. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love one another. Yes. If you can, show up. If you think about them, call them. Right. If you think about them, send them a test message. Right. If you know if the Lord says send them 20, send them 20. God will provide 40 back, 50 back, however he want to give it. God will do it. Yes. You just love one another. Yes. Are y'all hearing me? In yes, here? sir. This is why sometimes I question a whole bunch of people that call themselves Christian. You got your doctrine right, but where is your love? Yes, sir. You preach the Bible back and forth, but you can't give nobody a hug. Where is your love? Yes. You preach up and down, and everybody got to live it at the altar, but when you sat down, nobody can touch you. Where is your love? Come on, sir. And for, as for me, as pastor in our house. We're going to love one another. Yes, sir. We may, listen, we may not have all the bells and whistles. You ask me, we don't need it. We better off. But the truth of the matter is, we're going to love in here. Yes, sir. Why? Because that's the mark of Christianity. Amen? Stand to your feet. I'm through. Um, Thank you for listening to the word. We're praying that the word of God edified you. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your savior, uh, we want to invite you. We want to invite you to know Christ as your Savior. A couple of things that we need to do here is simple is that uh, you need, we need to confess our sins. Uh, uh, confess and say, Lord, I have sin in my life and I need that sin removed. And the only way that that sin can be removed is when we confess that Jesus is Lord, that he died for our sins and he was resurrected and is seated at the right hand of the Father. So you simply just need to say, Lord, I have sins. Forgive me for those sins. I receive you as Savior, and I believe by faith that you are Lord and that you are the Lord of my life, and you have redeemed me from my sins. And just like that, you have salvation. Just like that, you know the Lord for yourself. Uh, one thing that we've learned, uh, and, and we know at Union here at our church, uh, uh, we would uh, uh, we would love for you to be a part of our church. But at the same time, um, if you wish to go to another church or you want uh, uh, know someone else, that's fine too. But one thing is certain, and, and, uh, you don't have to be here to be saved. Uh, you know the Lord for yourself. So uh, if you have any uh, questions or concerns, I would uh, advise you to go to our email. Uh, our email is unionbaptist.south southriverNJ at gmail.com. That's unionbaptist.southriverNJ at gmail.com. If you have any questions, concerns, or if you just, uh, uh, even during this pandemic, you want to reach out and say, I want to be a part of this great church, you can do that as well. And we will contact, be in contact with you, and uh, we'll give you information on how to join the church and whatnot. Amen. I pray all is well with you. Uh, grace and peace.